You immediately feel powerful in Outriders. I was able to try out the early parts of this new game and on level 2 you already have an ability that lets you instantly kill enemies. But the game can be very challenging too. Like the first boss you encounter requires tactic and coordination, otherwise you don't stand a chance. The reveal trailer sparked my interest, but after playing the game for almost 5 hours, I really can't wait to hop back in and explore more of this awesome looking world. In this video I will tell you everything I learned about this brand new IP and why it's better than expected. The game will also launch on the PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X at the end of this year and I have footage of a high-end PC version that could give us an idea of what the game will look like on those next-gen systems. Before we start I want to thank Square Enix for sponsoring this video and inviting me to the event because now this game is really on my radar. Totally check it out via the special link in the video description. A like on the video would be really appreciated and let's go. One very important thing to note is that Outriders is not a games as a service. Yes the game does feature a hub that you can visit in between missions to get a new quest and buy new equipment. The UI looks similar to those types of games. There are many emotes that you can do. But the developer wants to stress that when the game launches in the holiday of 2020 that you get a complete package. The game should take around the 40 hours to complete if you do the occasional side mission as well that you can by the way also replay which is nice. No but there should be a complete story here when the game comes out and not one that will be finished via post launch updates. The menu hinted at 81 different enemy archetypes and that's really a ton compared to other looter shooter games. And one important thing I learned from my interview is that while the game has up to 3 player co-op you can play everything alone if you want. Like there should be no boss encounter or activity that requires you to have a group. The game is pretty story heavy at least in the early part that I played and while I'm not yet convinced by all the characters I met during these first missions, the premise of the story and the mystery of the world immediately grabbed me. Earth is lost and what is left of humanity is now one big spaceship looking for a new home and everyone hopes that the planet Enoch is that home. So you and a group of soldiers are sent out to explore this planet and see if it's a safe place to land the ship and rebuild society. But not everything goes according to plan. And this is actually the tutorial mission of the game where you learn the controls and then at one point have to find out where the missing signal went. Got eyes on the probe. Good work. Get the drive to get the hell out. But then you encounter this huge alien storm, the anomaly that kills many people and hits you as well but it doesn't kill you. You will be put in cryo sleep so you can survive and then you awake 31 years later and then a ton has changed. So while you wanted to warn everyone that they should not land, the humans did indeed come to this planet and are now trying to make the best out of it. So we should expect big settlements that the humans have built in the 30 years that we were asleep. But the trailers also hint at forest areas, a desert and a ton of other locations that we should be able to explore. And you do this with your truck, it's like your base on the wheels. You cannot ride it, but you can customize it. And it was explained to me that along the way you meet new characters that will join you on your journey and have side missions, so you can get to know them a little bit better. And really moving between these different locations on this mysterious planet has me very intrigued, but I could not see that in action yet. This preview event was focused on the first area of the game, a big sort of war zone that I had to fight my way through and man the fighting in this game is really a ton of fun. The shooting feels good and the different weapons totally change up your playstyle. I love using rivals in these games that have no scope and multiple bullets in the magazine so they can easily follow up with multiple headshots that are a one shot one kill against regular enemies. And I picked this weapon as a reward from a side mission and every side mission that I encountered had three different options so you could choose your preferred playstyle and also look at what weapon you think is the best. I also found a rifle that does have a scope for better range but then you do look through the scope every time you aim and I also found a rifle that shot faster but did less damage. 
damage. So there are quite a lot of variants for each weapon category. And after one side mission, I could already pick a blue weapon that has special effects. Like for example, with this shotgun, if I hit an enemy, you get this blue glowing effect. And if you then hit the enemy again, you have increased damage. It's pretty cool that early in the game, you already get some fun gear that really changes the way you play. Although the abilities from each class really take it to the next level. There are currently three classes announced, but there will be a fourth one revealed later on. And so far, all three look great and feel great in their own right. I started out with the Pyromancer, basically a fire mage. And the first skill you unlock lets you mark a target. And if you kill that enemy in a short period of time, then it will explode and kill or deal a ton of damage to surrounding enemies. And trust me, this can be very satisfying for sure. Especially in combination with the bubble that the trickster class can do. Everyone inside this bubble will be slowed. So if then the pyromancer marks a target that you then kill, you will have an insane multi-kill thanks to the combination of skills. We were immediately trying things out and I was surprised by how fluid and good it all worked. The trickster is your pretty cool magical rogue style of class. And the first ability you unlock with this class lets you simply slash the enemies that will then explode after one second. I also loved the gravity jump from the third class, the Devastator. With this one, you will launch yourself in the air and can then find a spot to land, dealing a ton of damage to surrounding enemies. And it normally has a 40 second cooldown, but I saved enough resources to buy the Ref's Mask that looks awesome, but it also added a second jump to the gravity jump, meaning that I could launch myself drop down, then immediately launch myself in the air again and find another location to land. And you are really rewarded by being aggressive and while there is cover, you can better engage and kill the enemies head on. Also because every class has its own healing mechanic that triggers by killing an enemy. And it's different per character you play. For the Devastator, you get health back by killing enemies from up close. And this is great for a tanky character because you want to be up close most of the time. But you can actually sustain yourself because you will get health back if you kill enemies from up close. And while the healing mechanic is always there, you can only have three of the eight skills that you unlock active at one time. So you really gotta pick and choose. This is a combination with the pretty big skill line for each class, gear and weapons that change your playstyle up, and the ability to mod powerful gear and weapons promises a very deep customization system where even the same classes could play completely different. And really utilizing the strength of your class and the weapons seem to be very important against the bosses. We could only fight one, and this is an enemy that you can encounter after 90 minutes or 2 hours into the game, and man, it was already pretty challenging. The boss has a ton of health, teleports back and forth, and does a lot of different abilities like electricity on the ground that could also trigger parts of the floor that you then had to dodge. And sometimes it would also summon this wall and would heal himself. We first thought that this wall was unbreakable, but soon realized that we had to shoot it so then the Guardian would stop healing. And because there are no enemies to kill for health, you really have to be extra careful. Luckily, you can revive your downed teammates though. And after 12 minutes of coordinating abilities, we finally took out this boss. And if the rest of the bosses are as challenging and require you to use all your abilities and weapons, then we are in for a blast. And if you can't get past a certain boss, then you can always go back to a lower world tier. So you unlock these world tiers as you kill enemies. And the higher the world tier, the more difficult the enemies will become, but also the more loot you will get in return. A system like this should help with the replayability because they can go back to a previous zone, boot it up to the highest world tier and still have a fun challenge. Although I also hope that there are some specific end game encounters where you can really test your fully upgraded character and gear. Right now developer People Can Fly wanted to focus on an introduction, a taste of what Outriders can be and I was impressed by how many meaningful upgrades and exciting gameplay there already was in this early part of the game. Like I played five hours, but actually replayed the same part almost three times with different characters. And now I really can't wait to see more of what this game has to offer. 
The developers could not answer all my questions regarding enemy scaling, for example. Can one person that is a way higher level still have a good time with someone who just started out? And I just want to see how the other locations look and feel. I'll totally keep an eye out for more information on Outriders. And if you want to see more Outriders on the channel or have questions, then totally let me know in the comments down below. I can totally go in depth on some other parts of this game if you want. So again, let me know in the comments down below. Subscribe for more Outriders if you haven't already. Like this video to support the channel. And thanks again to Square Enix for sponsoring this video. Really helps the channel out. And for now, I will speak to you next time. Goodbye.